Hey everyone, my name is Kajal and welcome back to my channel. For today's VBOTS tutorial video, we'll be integrating distance sensor to our robot and writing a controller code in C++. If you're looking for a VBOTS controller code for distance sensor in other programming languages such as C and Python, look for links in the description below. I'll include all of the timings here and in the description below. So, so without further ado, let's get into it. In our previous VBOTS tutorial video, we created a custom two-wheel differential drive robot and wrote controller code in C++ to drive the robot using motors. If you don't have this robot, you can use the link in the description to download it. Make sure to save this proto file in the proto folder of your VBOTS project and then use the plus sign, click on proto nodes, Select the proto and click add to add it to the VBOTS world. I already have the robot so I'm not adding it. Let's start by adding a distance sensor. As you can see in our robot, we have these two eyes and this would be a good spot for us to add our sensor. So go to the VBOTS scene tree. Under robot, children, Look for the node that represents the eye. Click on children and then click on the plus node to add our sensor. Under base node, look for distance sensor and click add. You'll not see anything different on the robot. So here's what we will do. Go to the menu bar, view, optional rendering and then select show distance sensor rays. As you can see here, there's a line which represents our distance sensor. And as you can see, it's pointing towards the side. So let's change that. Go back to the VBOT scene tree. Under your distance sensor, look for rotation. And change the angle in Y direction to minus 1.57 radians. And as you can see now, it's pointing forward. We'll also change the name of our distance sensor so it's easier to access from the VBOTS controller code. Let's change this to DS underscore left and hit enter. Make sure to keep saving your VBOTS world. Similarly, look for the other node that represents the other eye and go under children to add the distance sensor. Click on the plus sign, base node, distance sensor and add. Once again, it's pointing towards right by default. Let's change that. Under distance sensor, go to rotation and make your angle equal to negative 1.57 radians. This time we'll name it DS right and hit enter. Make sure to save your VBOTS world. As you can see, we now have two different distance sensors in front of our robot. Next, let's write our VBOTS controller code in C++ for distance sensor. Similar to our motors, we'll first create an object for the distance sensor and then enable it using time step. Next, inside our while loop, we'll read the values for our sensor. So let's get started. First and foremost, you'll add a header file. Now let's create object for our distance sensor.
Next, we'll enable our sensors using time step. We can now use our distance sensor. Inside our main loop, let's read the values using getValue function. Make sure to keep saving your VBOTS controller code. In this case, let's print those values and see what they look like. Let's save the VBOT controller code. And because this is a C++ file, we'll also have to build it. Hit reset and let's run the simulation. As you can see, it's not printing any values. I recently found out there's a bug due to which this is happening. So to print in either C or C++, you have to make sure to add a new line for your print message to be printed. So let's add that to our VBOTS controller code. I'm using end L, you can also use backslash N. Once again, let's save our VBOT code and build it again. Let's also turn on our distance sensor rays. This is another bug where I've seen when you reset, the rays go away. So you'll have to disable and enable it again. And let's run the VBOT simulation. As you can see, we now see values for our left and right sensors. For this next part, I'm going to run through the VBOT simulation one step at a time using this icon. I want you to observe the change in the distance sensor values in the console. As you can see, the values went from 1000 to 953 and eventually to 852. As you can see in the simulation, the rays have gone green to indicate that they have touched an object. As we continue through this simulation, you can see the value decreasing. So when there was no object in front of the sensor, the value was 1000. And as soon as it started seeing object closer to it, it gave us a distance reading. If you go to your VBOTS scene tree and look under the distance sensor, there's an option called lookup table. As you can see, there are two rows. This table tells us what the values will look like. Our first value is 000, 000 and our next value is 0 0.1, 1000 and 0. This indicates any values between 0 to 0 0.1 meters will get a reading between 0 to 1000. And the third value is for noise. You can change this value to add noise to your reading. Let's give that a try. As you can see, our left sensor is giving value of 1000, whereas our right sensor is giving the value in the 100 range. As our right sensor has noise, 
you can see that it's giving different values all the way from 82, 98 to 113. So far in our VBOTS tutorial series, we have learned to build a robot, drive it using motors and also learned the use of distance sensor. Next. We'll combine this to create our first project, which is a wall following robot. If you have any questions, use the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer them. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.